Gravel in the crease. Ryan Miller keeps it out. A rhubarb then ensues. Back the other way. Sabres with a three on one. You got Chris Drury. Let's it go. Beats Emery, not the bar. At the other end now, Brian Pache, shot from the point, gets through traffic and in. one nothing Ottawa on the road, white with the black and red trim. A touch of gold in there as well. They keep coming. Christoph Schubert gets it in front, goes to the backhand. Miller. Stopping him. one nothing Ottawa after one. So we go to the second period. Sabres, of course, looking to tie it. Danny Briere walks in front. Briere stymied. Number one in white, Ray Emery. They got physical. Tony Lidman, the hat guy, the hit on Schubert. He Mozart Schubert. Then Zidane Chera throws a check, kicking up both Briere and Dumont. Two for the price of one. Rough stuff continues. Chris Neal, elbow on Briere. No penalty in the play. More Sabres heat. Briere to Dumont. Back to Briere. Daniel Briere circling behind the net. He's trying to get in his guards. Ties it at one. Then the Buffalo fans get on Emery. Ray wasn't faced. Third period sends out a power play. Wade Ridge, uh, Ray Wedden blast from the point, hits a stick in front, fools. Miller 2 1, Ottawa. Sabres again, trying to get it back. Jochen Heck, hard to the net. Heck can't get by Emery, who came out with the nice looking Roger Crozier poke check. More from the Sabres. Alice Kotalik with a shot. Emery, the butterfly save. And the Sabres don't let up. Maxim Afenigenov for the chance. It can't get the backhand up and over Emery. Then it's JP is in Dumont, side of the net. Telling you, Ray Emery came up big for the Ottawa Senators. He made 29 saves. The Sens stay alive. Ottawa getting by Buffalo, 2-1. Swordsman uh, failed to score the first goal for the first time in this year's playoffs. Ottawa has just one win in their last 10 playoff games against the Sabres. Game five. Saturday night in Ottawa. I want to win uh, more for the guys in the room just because, you know, you see how bad those guys want to win and uh, definitely don't want to be the reason why uh, why we're going home early. They've got three very strong lines. I've said that. Uh, three very dangerous lines that uh, uh, you got to win games so you can win them. I think that uh, we went on the road and won a couple. We found a way to win our first home game. We're going to have to find a way to win. You know, game five on the road again. We got to keep it simple and uh, shut down you know, some of the big guys, and we did that tonight and didn't give them too much. And you know, that's what we needed is a close game. We had a battle, a fight for everything right to the end, and uh, guys did a good job. You know, it could have gone either way. So, you know, we just have to you know, take what we can from it. I, I don't think the guys should be, uh, you know, down about this game. I think we played hard. You know, I don't think there's been one game where we haven't played hard. It's a game. Uh, we were a lot looser tonight at the start than I thought we were the other night in here. And uh, I think we got rewarded now. Now we have to take advantage of it. Lopo the hero! Lopo ties the game on another great feed! What a rocket! Lopo walks right in a shot, he scores! Lopo the second tonight! This is his first playoff. He scores! Lopo gets the hat trick! Thanks to Joffrey Lupul's four goal effort in game three, the Colorado Avalanche were in the same position the Ottawa Senators were Thursday, facing elimination, facing the embarrassment of being swept, and that's not exactly something Colorado is used to. The Avs hadn't gone down in four since moving from Quebec to Denver 10 years ago. In fact, the Avs franchise has been swept just once in a seven game series. That's when the Islanders rolled past the Nordiques way back in 1982. That was just so before the Islanders knocked off the Canucks in the Stanley Cup final. Avs franchise, again, Again, looking to avoid their first four-game sweep in 20 years. Joffrey Lupul coming off a four-goal performance in the Game 3 Ducks win. Palindrome in one. There he is in the wraparound. Stopped by Jose Theodore at the other end. Alex Tangay to Joe Sackick. The former Swift curve Bronco makes it 1-0 Colorado. Ducks are in at it. Todd Marchand. Look at the moves on John Michael Lyles. Can't beat Theodore, though. Same power play. Loose biscuit comes to Ian LaPerriere. Stopped by Ilya Brzgalov. Bad news for the Avs, Alex Tangay leaving the ice with an injury still in the first. Dustin Petter feeding Todd Marchant. 
And in Marchandian fashion, he ties this game at one. His first playoff goal in six calendar years. Now good news for the Avs. Alex Tangay back on the bench for the start of the second. And here we are, middle stands at Timo Solani picks up the loose puck. And all that feels good for the ex-Avalanche. Timo, 2-1, Anaheim. They gotta come up with a trophy for comeback player of the year. Third period, more trouble for Tangay. Vitaly Vishnevsky nails him. Marshawn Anaheim Penner. looking to add to the lead, two on one. Marshawn feeds big Dustin Penner, and it's 3-1 Anaheim. Ducks win 4-1, they sweep, the, that was it? They sweep the series 4-0 as the foul reached the Western Conference Final for the second time in their last three seasons. Colorado swept for the first time since 1986. Imagine what Vancouver fans are gonna think if the Ducks go any further than this. They got Berkey, they got Randy Carlisle, they got Bob Murray. All those people in the Canuck organization, what, a year and a half ago? Todd Marchand had two goals and one assist as Anaheim becomes the first team to advance to a conference final. Smith from behind the net, a wrap around, Holcomb scores! Holcomb scores! Edmonton wins! The Oilers are back. And they are going absolutely crazy here in this rink. Now you say what you want about uh, triple overtime, uh, Sean uh, or Sean Horkoff's triple overtime heroics Wednesday night. It was Ryan Smith's performance that was most impressive as the Oilers uh, beat the Sharks in Game Three of their Western Conference semifinal. Smith took a puck in the face in the second period. He lost teeth, he lost blood, but in a fashion typical of a hockey-playing Albertan with a mullet, Smith dusted himself off and got right back to work. In fact, he drew an assist on Horkoff's winner, ending a marathon that had both teams talking fatigue. When you expend that amount of energy for some gain, and when you lose, you, I mean, you, you come out of it, you expended a lot of energy, and you really have nothing to show for it. So I think psychologically that has a, an effect on you. We're just excited about moving forward. I mean, uh, we're going to come out and be full of energy tomorrow and, and uh, be excited to play again. It's really four games and four nights uh, in terms of energy, and you factor in. Uh, um, you know, the playoff intensity and the speed and uh, collisions have been going on. That's it's almost like playing five games in four nights. So fatigue does become a factor. You guys are getting their rest. So, uh, you know, it's no time to feel feel tired or feel sorry for yourself. So you got to go out and, and uh, work as hard as you can. The Manitoba Moose score four power play goals in a 5-1 victory over Grand Rapids uh, to even their American Hockey League playoff series at two games apiece. Alex Burroughs had a goal and three assists. Kevin Bieksa had three hoppers. Game five goes Saturday in the peg. World Hockey Championships, Canada and way, Latvia. Sidney Crosby, Sydney Crosby and the boys the playing the hometown Stewart. Latvians. The ice, looking Let a raucous crowd on their side. First period, Canada power play. Jason, Jason Williams, Williams point shot, deflects it in off the defenseman. And it's we'll one nothing Canada. Get, get used to that, a Canadian power play goal. Five on three uh, for the Canadians. Scars. Williams to Crosby, no mistake. Two nothing for the good guys. Late in the first, Latvian crowd, upset with the refs, started throwing things onto the ice. And I mean everything, runners, cell phones. Coins, coins. Teams had to leave the ice early. That's smart. Throw coins on the ice. Third period now, eight nothing. Latvia called for the slash on Crosby. Their 15th penalty. Crowd again, upset. They litter the ice again. Latvian players trying to get the fans to calm down. They're on the mics the whole bit. Canada wins a crazy one, 11 nothing. Canada scored nine power play goals. Ten different players score for Canada. Jason Williams, one goal, three assists. Kyle Calder, uh, two tallies. While Sidney Crosby added a goal and a helper. Octopus to the left of Dominic Hoster. Hockey fans in Detroit have been throwing octopi onto the ice after a big win by the Red Wings. This started in 52 during the Wings Stanley Cup run. This will all make sense in a second, folks, trust me. Not to be outdone, Edmonton Oilers fans have been throwing Alberta beef onto the ice while their team matched up against the Wings in this year's postseason. They've been doing it against the Sharks as well. In uh, 01, thousands of plastic bottles thrown on the field by Cleveland Brown fans, angry about a call. Because of this, the team no longer sells 20 ounce bottles of beer. Soccer fans, they're always out of control. But tossing lit flares onto the field, eh, that's a bit of a problem. And because of baseball steroid investigation, Barry Bonds has been questioned by many people, including the fans, However, throwing a syringe, that's taken things too far. Hey, if 
that's what they want to do, embarrass themselves, so that's on them. That has nothing to do with me at all. Of course, this all has to do with what uh, the Latvian fans were doing over in Riga today. So our power poll, what is the strangest thing fans have thrown onto the field of play? An octopus, Alberta beef, plastic beer bottles, flares, or a syringe? You want to take part, log on to sportsnet.ca. Still ahead, Barry takes another tumble in his effort to get off the babe's doorstep. Jays feed off pitching and power to get past the Oakland A's. The Bo Sox add a little insult to the Yankees' injury. And a look at the secret to the Oilers' success. This edition of Sportsnet News brought to you by Bell Express View, Canada's HD leader with the most HD channels. And by Pennzoil, not just oil, Pennzoil. My daughter asked me for some advice, so I said, go to university, be a lawyer. What does she do? She takes an apprenticeship and becomes a tradesperson. Same trade as me. But there's a difference, Dad. My training gave me the skills, and I've learned to run a business. So now, she's her own boss, and she has an accountant and a lawyer working for her. How about that? Want respect? Opportunity? Good pay? Learn a skilled trade. Skilled trades, a career you can build on. Okay, boys, here we go. Season 5 of The Trailer Park Boys is on DVD. More action. More drama. Oh, what? A toad of soap. A f***ing toad of soap. More stupidity. That's right, we're going to have all kinds of bonus features. Trailer Park Boys, Season 5 on DVD. Own it today. No! I can't believe it! Uh, uh, what's going on, Frank? Ah, I'm watching NHL playoff highlights on my bell phone. How's our team doing? Well, we had a great first period, but now we keep getting scored on. Oh, really? You shaved? You're not supposed to shave your playoff beard. I started spot waxing and things got out of hand. Duh! Well, great, they scored again. Now you can't blame that one on me. Over time, tartar can turn white teeth stained and ugly. So, to help keep teeth looking their best, use new advanced Listerine. Mission is advised.